Okay, we're going to start with the nation. 2023, President Itzel's turn after Buhari says Ayade. Native Dr. Help over Anambra lawmakers beheading. PDP delegate shares several million with community. Ministry Director for Varsity Hotel and Factory. Nigeria, Spain seek global action against food crisis. Ankara reopens school shots last year over hijab crisis. Okay, which story are we starting with? Let me take this story. The native doctor? Story? No. <laughs> PDP delegate shares millions among community yeah. members. So his name here is he's called Mr. Tenko Sabo. And he shared about 7 million naira on the less privileged in his community. He paid for orphans who were sitting for WAEK, who are to be sitting for WAEK and NECO exams. He paid um, for their exams. He paid hospital bills. And um, it was said that this was a promise he had made to his community that whatever he gets from the, you know, from the primaries as a delegate, he will come and share amongst his community. Um, there was someone, a former special advisor on media to the late Kaduna State Governor, was saying that he would, you know, he's not going to talk about whether collecting money as a delegate is the right thing or not, yeah. but he can say something good will come out of it, and he's happy that he did that. He said his son was uh. on social media hyping his father. It was like, of all the delegates, how many of them are as good as my dad? My dad made this promise, and he has delivered on the promise. I said this, so this is very clear. Robin Peter? To people. people or... Okay, let's uh, take another story here. Yeah. I thought this uh, prelate, I took the story yesterday, yes, a follow up. Samuel Kanu Uche was kidnapped and released after paying a hundred million ransom to the kidnappers, has been invited by the army for questioning. So I think he granted an interview. I took that part yesterday where he was talking about <coughs> the fact that um, he noticed there were a lot of soldiers around that vicinity and they can't say they are not aware that these kidnappers are there. He also mentioned that they masquerade to be uh, headers during the day and then they kidnap at night. And so the army took exception to the comments and they have invited him. According to the director of Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Onye Mamwachuku, he said the army will meet him to know more of the circumstances surrounding the abduction. And they are going to be taking this allegation seriously. This is a time of insecurity. They cannot just sweep it under the carpet. He needs to come and explain exactly how he feels the army is in connivance. The explanation, they should follow through with the investigation. Exactly. That's a real one. Yeah. So they were asking questions <laughs> like, was the matter reported to the army? Because as at the moment they were making that report, they had not um, gotten any form of uh, report. They also asked if when they were negotiating for ransom, the ransom was paid under 24 hours, did they get the army involved? But I've had a family member who had been kidnapped, and they tell you, if you tell any yeah. official... That's beside the point. See, We're focusing on the yeah. testimony of the man. So yeah. let's focus on the... the, 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 the not, don't talk about... Don't criticize the situation yeah. of people yeah. or try let's to defend us, yourself. Yeah. Who did just it? listen to yeah. him. He was kidnapped. Was he truly kidnapped? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Did he pay ransom? Yes. So one of the frontline um, presidential aspirants, Ashwa Jibola-Betin, was in Calabar yesterday to visit Governor Ayade, uh, where Governor Ayade was saying that the reason why zoning was adopted was to provide an egalitarian, equitable power sharing. And he's saying that this issue of consensus would not work, that the, the National Working Community should not consent, but just want them to do primaries properly and let people select who um, the presidential candidate would, would be. If you recall, he's also an aspirant, and he was saying he emphasized that um, Ashwaju is also... Um, uh, trying to describe Ashwaju as a transgenerational leader and political strategist, mm -hmm. said that the frontline contender and has capacity, and experience, and exposure to lead the country. I mean, this is a co-contender. Yeah. I think and he said that he emphasized that Tinubu is <laughs> eminently qualified to serve as president, and that um, mm -hmm. and he had just extolled all these. That values. doesn't sound like something from a co-contender. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Ashwaju was there in Kalaga. They also they are also consulting because the they are hoping to talk to the delegates. Only the consultation is with the president because it's the president. Um, but they are also talking to delegates because okay. if the president now chooses not to select or okay. agree or insist on a consensus, mm. it's a delegate that will, that will like choose. You know, can the president insist on it? He can ask for a consensus yeah, and get everybody to sit down. I think they, all, they all flew to one country right now. He can lobby as well. Let me take the Anambra native doctor. I still wonder why we do this thing. So this 70-year-old man was arrested for beheading um, the, lawmaker, a, the lawmaker representing Aguata 2 constituency, Okechuku Okoye, and this uh, 
um, 70 year old man was arrested. He's a native doctor. Um, he's been working for government in Anambra State, and they linked him to pers um, personnel involved in the cri in a, a bit of crisis. See, this I'm not no casting as no insult to our native traditional ways, but in the strength of our native traditional ways. The white men came to colonize us. So obviously, if these things can protect us, we should do much better than beheading and killing people in the name of trying to produce some charm. They're not using oh, it for the right person thing. that was beheaded. A 70-year-old man thinking he's frail, he's... Maybe he's, he's, he's the one using the head. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They said he beheaded. So that's so items were recovered as well from him. Moving on quickly now to punch. APC ex school governors divided over Buhari's secession plan. Screening report ready. Um, Nigeria, Spain signed nine MOUs on criminal matters and others. Customs seized 828 bags of foreign rights, others in Benin, Lagos. Jab crisis police beef up security around Kara School. Okada riders desert Lagos roads, police impound 140 motorcycles and arrest passengers. Couple three children die in Uluk crash, killed in Benin market. Lagos ports collapsing, West African. Cargo diversion imminent. INEC laments low turnout stays 20 million PBCs unclaimed. Mm. And the sludge terrorists from Northeast recruiting massively in Kaduna, says theatre commander. In security, local foreign companies withdraw 69% of investment projects. Okay, which story? The Lagos State yes. Police Command um, Wednesday, you know, the um, Okada ban for Lagos State, for some parts of Lagos State, started yesterday. And that yesterday, they were able to seize 140 motorcycles and arrested 16 passengers and uh, riders, and they've taken them to the mobile courts. Now, some of the residents in Lagos said that um, they saw about 90% compliance with this ban. And for those bikes that were caught, some of them, some of them immediately saw the security officials, they will run down, abandon their bikes and disappear. Now some uh, traders, um, market women, um, bus riders, they were saying that they really liked the ban. For yesterday, the roads were really clear and they were able to move around without you know, hitches and glitches here and there. And some people in different estates, I think there's this um, Songotedo estate and the island were saying that they, they definitely will have to start looking at getting shuttle buses that will help ease their movement and a lot of people walked to their various destinations. That it wasn't that bad. People still had a normal life even without the bikes. But that they are asking that government look into repairing most of those inner roads that will make you know taking easier. cabs easier for residents. So let's see how this enforcement of the ban goes. Yesterday was I went out yesterday and it was really free. The road it looks like a bit of Lagos that I used to know. Okay. <laughs> Let's, um, I was going to take two, do you have a story? Go ahead, please. So, um, Lagos ports are collapsing, according to Punch. Um, the story is that there are indications that the nation may soon start experiencing more cargo um, diversions to other neighboring West African countries. That's because the Tinkan and Apapa key aprons mm. are due, you know, are collapsing. Mm. And a key is a part of the port where cargo is lifted, vessels are um, loaded and and unloaded and because of this situation what it means many shipping companies would not like to come and you know um off offload at this um in our tinkan or papa port so and so they are thinking what one they will ask for a higher premium because they understand there is a risk to their ships and so that will make it even more expensive for yeah. us freight rates will go higher or they will, um, go to neighboring countries which would mean a whole lot for our economy mm -hmm. and it will mean for people to go to these neighboring countries to get their goods yes. and bring them to Nigeria. Anyway, the Federal Ministry of Transportation and MPA, this is a response to this um, report, and MPA are saying that they are working on a design for the reconstruction of the Tinkam port and the funding options are also being explored. And there's also a 16.5 um, million draft ship to shore Cranes automated operating system, Lekki Deep Sea Port is expected to come on stream by September this year. That will take larger vessels and more cargo from neighboring countries. And then, rather than diversion to neighboring ports, cargo is most likely to be diverted from right. Tinkan to Lekki. Okay. So they're just trying to say Nigerians do not be panicked. We are on it. And we hope they are. Yes, so we'll see. Okay, let's have a quick break. When we come back, we we'll continue with the review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Your view.
you. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. I'll take one story in the punch. The INEX Deputy Director, Mirren Kemp, has decried the poor, voter, um, um, poor participation of citizens at the voters registration that has been ongoing since 2021. According to her, 20 million PVCs are yet to be collected, Nigerians. She also said that INEC doesn't conduct elections on social media. <laughs> if you want to participate, votes are counted in ballot boxes. So you bring your PVC and they count the ballot boxes. So please get off the social media, according to her. She, this is exactly how she said it. She said it with very energy. <laughs> These youth in this country will come out in mass and cast for their vote. That she said, however, I'd like to say, INEC does not conduct elections on social media. Do we count ballots on Twitter or Instagram? Our ballots are counted in the ballot box. It's only the ballot paper that enters into the ballot box that the commission counts. So please, <laughs> all your yada yada, take it to the PVC office, collect your PVC, and go and vote. All right, let me quickly say this. Um, local foreign companies withdraw 69% of investment projects. This is from the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission. They disclosed this in their reports, saying that over the past, um, between Q1, 2021 to Q1 2022, the report shows a decline in investment. Aside from that, about most of the investment went to manufacturing sector, $1.1 billion, 45%, and 25% went into the agri sector. The state that attracted the highest investment commitment was actually Sokoto State, $1.05 billion, which is 41% of the total commitment followed by Lagos State. Mm -hmm. So um, I was just, I had to highlight the Sokoto State that must have done something right to attract the investors into it. And we need to have more states attracting investment on ground because then you can have internet generated revenue that would reduce your pressure on waiting to collect money from the federal account. Okay. Moving on quickly to Daily Sun, Buhari stands on successor split APC. Tech OK's NNPC, ECOWAS deal, Niger Morocco gas pipeline. Methodist prelate kidnapped troops not involved, this army. Yeah, goes to defend them. FG evacuates 166 victims of trafficking and others from Libya. We need everyone to win 2020 polls, says Atiku. FIRS begins recovery of states and local governments on remitted tax deductions. APC presidential ticket Buhari may now be choice to Shimbajo and Lawan. Okay. So we know that uh, the president came out and gave a speech. And uh, people are saying that he seemed, though he did not outrightly point at anyone who he wants to be his successor, but uh, they are suspecting is between Usibaju and Lawan. And so speculations are just ongoing. And um, this, uh, he has also set up a team to have um, a discussion so that at the end of the day, they will give him, help him make an informed decision on who to pick between Usibaju and Lawan. And I remember that that speech, though he didn't pick, um, pick somebody, he also said something about giving a second chance to people that he knows that when uh, governors have first term, they also get a second chance. And so it seemed like he's trying to position people who are already in power to have a second chance. Yeah, and said, uh, yes. And they said um, he also highlighted that the person who would be his choice would be someone who would continue from where he has stopped, uh, the vision that he has for the country. And he is weighing the reactions of the Southeast, the Southwest, the Middle Belt. He's also weighing the reaction of the North. And um, he's looking at the fact that um, Atiku has emerged in the PDP primary. is one major thing that's making everybody go helter-skelter. So hopefully when he comes back from Spain, they would have helped him make that informed decision to show us okay, the way they were. Just, by the have, sixth of I'm telling you. The sixth. So it's sort of like a response to that from just people um, you know, paying attention, and some of people are saying that um, a lot of them were speaking anonymously, of course, that they feel that um, the president must have been quoted out of context, that he did not mention anything about specifically picking anyone, and so they will wait for further details, you know, and there's some speaking anonymously, they're saying that this is not right, that the president himself, the process of a primary to become president, he should not deny other people the chance. So would hear, you know, in a few days, exactly back. the truth. Okay. State of things. <laughs> Some of us read the transcript like we're writing the exam. <laughs> we're writing the exam. We're going to write the exam. Uh, if this is dissected, I dissected the session. Next few days. Is four, four, the four more days. <laughs> That's four all. The six, we will know who is the person. Okay, so FIRS mm -hmm. is saying that they are ready to recover the unremitted tax deductions detained at the coffers of the local 
state government. We are going to be talking to the federal government, the Ministry of Finance, to um, decline approval of any request for the issues of state bonds, um, other securities, capital markets, as well as requests for external borrowings from this, for, for these states and local governments until they remit the detained funds that they have with them to the cops of the federal government. And this was said by, by the chairman of the FIRS, Mohammed Nami. He was also saying that um, it would also make a name and shame the defaulting states and local governments while publishing the amount owed to the unremitted account. So please name them. Let's know who, who is collecting taxes. Oh, yeah, and remitting. not remitting. Okay, for money. let's move quickly to Vanguard. APC stakeholders rail against Buhari's bid to pick successor. Power generation dips below 2,000 megawatts as poor supply persists. Alleged discrimination from eviction notice, northern traders sue Lagos government and others. Um, FG unwilling to deal with terrorists or Tom. Court orders interim seizure of university properties linked to the ex-DFA. PDP delegate shares convention money with community members. FG to tackle rising food prices. We must rescue Niger from misrule of seven years, says Atiku. And family of five perish in auto crash. Um, in Undo. So let, me, yeah, let me take the Governor Utom's story. The go Governor of Benue State, Governor Utom, was speaking. Autumn. Ot Autumn was speaking um, to the international community, the Mikotsi visit, the um, United Kingdom Parliament, all party parliament group. Um, and he was talking about the fact that, Ni that Nigeria is very, we know that Nigeria is a multi ethnic, uh, multi religious, multi ethnic country, and the federal government is saddled with responsibility of uniting. Mm. the country, but he alleged that the government isn't willing to deal um, to, to deal with terrorism and the terrorists. He, he, he alleged that the current appointment of suspected Boko Haram supporters into key federal offices, integration of repentant members of the sect into military and failure of the government to arrest and prosecute terrorist headsmen have proven to be complicit I've proven that the government is complicit in this. He also said, for the sake of national unity and cohesion, peaceful coexistence and promotion of development, the rights of the people to freedom of religion must also be respected in Nigeria. All he's saying is that, that, that the Nigerian government could do a whole lot more mm -hmm. in terms of action to speak against and act against terrorism. And what they're doing right now seems to support right. terrorists. Mm -hmm. For a governor, city government to be saying this, this is not the first time he's crying out mm -hmm. for help and crying against specific he people. talking about it. We need to address this situation. All right. So the That's federal yeah. government uh, said yesterday that they have put measures in place to address the rising cost of food in the country and they're going to be conveying a meeting <clears> at <throat> the National Food Security Council for this. So they have lined up concrete actions to ensure the growth of not just uh, the agricultural sector but other sectors. So according to the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zaina Bad, he says the FEC approved the National Food Security Council to meet very quickly to address this issue of a food inflation and also provide a plan and some methods to reduce the cost of food for the citizens. He also said that um, the council was built, uh, uh, briefed about the uh, rising inflation rate and the need to manage the cost of inflation. Then they compared uh, the 2022 GDP report, which shows that the economy had grown by 3.1% in the first quarter compared to last year, which was just about 0.5%. And um, this is just like a gradual economic stability from 2020's um, recession. And what they are going to do is to try to measure up other sectors so that because now we're not seeing the growth. We're not, the citizens are not feeling the impact of the growth because other sectors are not growing as well. But the thing for me is I, I believe that when you call a meeting and you have, you know, resolved some of this, tell us the actions you're taking. So don't call us and tell us the same things that we know. The papers are saying it, the analysts are saying it. Don't tell us the same things. Give us the steps that you're using to curb this food inflation. Let us feel it as Nigerians. All right. Yes, yeah, so House of Lani leaders at the Alaba Rago Market, I hope I got that, mm -hmm. yesterday slammed a 50 million naira damage against the legal state government alongside two of its commissioners, the Inspector General of Police, um, also was Commander Lagos Rapid Response Squad, RRS, the Lagos Environmental and Special Offenses Unit Task Force as respondents. They're saying that um, they're alleging that they're being discriminated for being Hausa Fulani. They said that many of their stores, there were signs asking for them to leave that market and they look 
and they realized that they were just the ones being targeted, that all the others from different uh, ethnic ethnicity were not, um, those um, signs were not put on their shops. So they're asking for, um, you know, the court to make sure that, you know, there's a response to that, they are paid that amount in damages, and that, you know, that there's a process in which that would have gone for those um, signs to be put up, that process was not followed. So I guess we'll yeah. hear very soon how it all plays out. All right, so in relation to you know, the discrimination also, the Kwara State government is, has beefed up police uh, uh, around the Baptist school in Kwara State. Remember, they, had, they shut them down last yeah. year. No, earlier this year, in February, for the, the issue between the Christians and the Muslims, the job wearing yeah. the, so the Ministry of Education is just insisting that the girl, Muslim girls who want to wear hijab to school can wear to school, public schools, especially this Baptist school. But they, they beefed up that, that school today, this one. This was resumed this morning. And they're worried about violence, but there's a lot of security to ensure that nobody is hurt. Because if you recall, I think somebody died um, yes. earlier in the year when this happened. Yeah. That's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, move on to our hot topic of the day. It's Thursday. We love to gist on Thursday. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.